So by now we visited the field. In this case, we simulated going out into a desert scrub, uh, which is supposed to be dominated by a creosote, which gives it, gives it its name. Uh, and we collected data on 10 uh, randomly placed transects out in this uh, habitat. And then we filled in a table similar to this one, table 20.1. And a prior video showed uh, the process of collecting this for each one. And for 10 transects, um, for example, the species labeled as C, which is creosote, there was a frequency of eight intervals that it was found in, in those, uh, within those 10 transects. There was only five individuals observed, that's N, and the creosote covered, the creosote we observed covered a total of 3.9 meters uh, when we combined all of the 10 transects that we, we looked at. And then that same idea with the other species that we encountered. We didn't encounter them all on every transect, but we encountered them uh, as we went through this. Now, when we were out in the field uh, collecting data, we had to write a series of numbers every time we observed uh, the creosote. Uh, we recorded on, on each transect, uh, and we had separated those by a comma. Then at the end, we totaled these values. We totaled the frequencies for all 10 transects, the frequencies for, uh, not the frequencies, but the number of individuals and the coverage, and we did that again for each species. Now, uh, ultimately what we want to know is what the totals are all for all of them, the combined total for the frequency of touches uh, or intercepts, the, the total number of individuals that we came across, and the total coverage. So that's really simple analysis. All we got to do is take out a calculator, and then we go to each column and start uh, adding them up. So for the first column, I would say 8 plus 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 2 plus 8 plus 2 plus 1. And that gives me a total of 31. Uh, and then you do the same for the next column. You get the total in and then the total uh, for the last column. And you can do that with a calculator. Better yet, you can go place these values uh, in a spreadsheet. Uh, that's the wrong spreadsheet. And uh, so we did that, and those are the species. Well, I went ahead and did that, and those are the species there. And you can see that first column I added with a handheld calculator. These were the the frequencies for the individual species. The I stands for this. It's supposed to be a subscript uh, right here, but it's hard to do um, uh, in uh, Google Sheets. But what I did was I programmed it down here to uh, sum them up. And then the same thing for the number of individuals. There was 19 individuals total for all when we combined all uh, 10 transects. And then the same thing for uh, the coverage. There was a total of 13.7 meters of coverage on those 10 transects. By the way, I went ahead and copied down the key that was on the bottom of the map for each the name of each species. C stands for creosote bush. E is uh, brittle, uh, brittle bush. Uh, D is uh, Desert Trumpet and so on. This key is on the bottom of that map that you all had, uh, did the simulation with. Uh, so the idea here is to sum up these, and this is going to be important now because we're going to take each individual, like creosote, and we're going to figure the number, of, uh, the frequency for it, and then calculate something called the regular frequency. And so that regular frequency um, and we're also going to put the relative density, which is the relative number for each one. Those formulas are given uh, right here uh, on your in your lab manual. So the relative frequency is take the individual frequency, the number that was in the box here. So uh, if this was uh, creosote, get that to write. So if this was the creosote and it was a number of eight, uh, and then we totaled that, that total on the bottom of this was, uh, those were the totals. And so the total down here we saw was uh, for big, and we're gonna symbolize this capital F was equal to 31. So this would be F uh, for the creosote, okay? The FI means for the species, the little i in this case is F for the creosote, right? So 
the formula here is taking your individual frequency and dividing by the total uh, frequency. So in order to calculate this for the creosote, we would take, um, we're going to call that FR for relative frequency. That's this formula right here. We're going to take the individual value, FI, which is FC for the creosote, and divide it by capital F. So we would take 8 in this case and divide it by 31. Okay. Now, whatever the next number is here, it could be 4, whatever for that next species, I don't remember what it was, but whatever that number is, you would take that number, put it on the top, and then divide by the total. So you do that all the way down, and you're going to get your relative frequencies for each one. Uh, if you were to add up the relative frequencies at the end, you would get you should get a value of 1 overall. It's kind of almost like you're calculating a percent for each one, but you're leaving it as a ratio or, or decimal form. You would do the same thing for the relative uh, number, which they're referring to as relative density, and it's a linear density because we were moving along a linear transect. There's a difference there, that, and uh, area density, but that's uh, no time to discuss that here. So for the number, the same thing. Whatever the number is here, I think there was like five creosote individuals, if I'm not mistaken. And whatever that total was on the bottom here, that capital N, you're going to divide by that and get a relative frequency. And then you do that for relative cover. You're going to get your total cover, capital C, and you're going to calculate. So we're going to symbolize uh, uh, relative frequency as F sub R, the relative density uh, or number. Uh, we can say, uh, let's, we could say N R, or if you want to use D for density. And then we're just keeping with the same letters. And then for C, the relative coverage. Uh, and they're all the same, uh, basically the same formula as the individual value divided by the total. And so if um, if we went back and, and let's we allowed the spreadsheet to do this for us over here, all we would have to do is take the 8 and divide it by 31, and that would give us our relative um, um, frequency. And then take the 5 and divide it by the total 19 here, and that would give us... Uh, our relative number, which they refer to as density, and then take 3.9 for creosote and divide it by 13.7. Now, they have a totally separate table to report the values here, uh, but I just actually am going to expand and add a table in between. So I'm going to unhide there. And uh, oops, I think I hit them. So I'm going to add uh, a column after each um, I'm going to add a column after each one now. Let me unhide columns. So there they are. So you can see I had already written them in there. So this column is the relative frequency. So that would be the bit, the frequency divided by this total would give me an answer. And I already have the relative frequency calculated for uh, the creosote. It comes out to 0 0.2581, which in percent, that would be 25% of 31. And so now I would do the same thing for, for species E which is brittle bush, and we would take 4 and divide it by 31. And the good thing about spreadsheets is if you know how to copy the formulas, uh, they'll do this for you automatically. So uh, those are the relative numbers for each one. It took this number for these individual species to divide by 31. So these are your relative frequencies for each one. And you can see the ones where we only had uh, one interval, which, uh, say, species T was found. It only has a relative frequency of 0 0.0323. So you see... Uh, the most frequent ones were species C, which is creosote, and species S, which is another one of those species here. Uh, and then we do the same thing for the relative density. We have the total number. Um, I think I, I put uh, big N little uh, uh, big N little D. So let's uh, we should change that. Uh, so let's say relative number. Okay. Let's say relative number like that. Okay. So that would work, which they're calling density. And when we do that for creosote, 5 divided by 19 gives me a relative value of 0.26, which would be 26% of this. Uh, and then once we take that formula and we have that formula there, uh, all we got to do is take that and then copy it down, and it does the rest for us automatically making the calculation real quick. Otherwise, you're doing this with a handheld calculator. You're taking 2 divided by 19, put your answer there. 2 divided by 19, put your answer there. And then 1 divided by 19 and do that. Now, remember, 
we've combined with what we see on the spreadsheet, we've combined uh, the two tables, table 20.1 and 20.2. Table 20.1 just had uh, these numbers here. The individual frequencies, numbers, and uh, coverage. And the other table had the relative frequencies, so we just combined the two. And then the same thing for coverage. These are in meters. 3.9 divided by 13.7 gives me 0.28, or about 28% of that coverage. And then you take that formula, and it'll do the rest for us real quick. That's nice. Okay. Now, um, all of this is fine, but now we want to get an idea here. Uh, what was the whole point to this? This allows us to rank our species in terms of uh, how much of a presence they have within that plant community. Uh, and uh, in other words, which ones seem to be more important in that community? In fact, we're going to calculate an index based on the three relative values called an importance uh, value. Uh, and that's also given in your in your lab manual. So uh, the importance, where which is down here on the bottom. So let me go ahead and bring that up again. So these are the values we just calculated right here. These right here, the relative frequency, relative uh, number or density, and then the relative coverage. The importance value for each species then is going to be its relative frequency plus its relative density plus its relative coverage. These three values, you add them together. Those decimals we just calculated. Okay. So all we got to do now is go back to these columns here, the relative values, those columns there, and then add those decimals, which are the relative values, and that gives you an importance value. So when I do that for the first one, for the creosote, you can see the formula there I put add cell C4 plus E4 plus G4. This is C4, this is E4, this is G4. When I do, I get a value of 0 0.8059. And now I'm going to do is take that formula, copy it, and do it all the way down. And now I have the importance values for all of them. Okay. And so when we look at these importance values, they give us an idea of which ones uh, tend to be more present in that habitat or seem to have more important in determining or the overall structure what we see now. Remember that this uh, habitat was called a creosote scrub, desert scrub habitat, and it gave it its name was because creosote seems to be the more dominant one. Now let's check the numbers here. Creosote has a number of 0.8. Let's see all the other values, 0 0.4, low, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.7. That one's almost as high as creosote. That's that S species, uh, 0 0.14, 0 0.10. So here, the one with the highest importance value, just based on the 10 random samples we took, seems to be creosote. So they give the habitat that name. This is a three creosote scrub. In fact, a lot of times they'll name the habitat after the two most important values. So we might call this habitat C, uh, creosote. Okay. Creosote, and then the next most important one uh, in this index, so it's an index value, a way of assessing this uh, is 0.798, and that was species S, so this is Bursage. So we might call it then, this is a creosote bush or creosote Bursage uh, scrub, uh, desert scrub habitat. So the way I would probably name this based on those importance values uh, at the end. So this is your final interpretation. What does all this mean? All this means is that our habitat is a creosote. Oh gosh, what was the name of the other species there? Creosote bursage. Th these are the common names, right? So creosote bursage. Hey, I'm recording this late at night and I'm tired. Uh, so it's a creosote uh, creosote bursage desert scrub is how we might label it. Now there's other species in there, but that's the interpretation. So I kind of, hey, what habitat were you in? Well, the data seems to suggest this is a creosote bursage uh, dominant desert scrub habitat. So that's how you interpret 
the line transects, and now we have a, a, a baseline of data that we can use for comparison. We can compare it to other locations, uh, other areas. We can compare it in time from present to future in case changes are occurring in that area. So these kinds of, of numbers become important uh, when it comes to uh, giving a current description of the distribution and abundance of species, not just the top two, but all of them uh, in there. Uh, and then seeing it, how changes might occur over time, if there's any disturbances in the area, uh, or um, even and nowadays if industries go in there, what kind of effect do they have on these uh, habitats? So that's the, the important uh, uh, thing here at the end, is how you interpret this data and why it's useful. So hope this helps.